So in this video, we're going through a particular practical. It's an important one. It's the one where you prepare and show the production of alcohol by yeast. So we're demonstrating anaerobic respiration, alcohol fermentation. The key to answering any question on this practical and every practical is knowing what they're trying to show. What is the topic all about? So this practical is all about anaerobic respiration. We're going to use yeast, which is a single celled fungus. This is a living organism. You're going to create anaerobic conditions. So this yeast will break down glucose anaerobically to give ethanol, carbon dioxide and a small amount of energy. So what did we need for this practical? Well, firstly, we need the yeast. We need conical flasks, fermentation locks, which are really important and a water bath, or you could use a water bath and an incubator. So we also need the glucose solution because that's what's going to be broken down. And most importantly, we need the chemicals to test for ethanol. So we're going to perform the iodoform test. So we need sodium hypochlorite solution and potassium iodide solution. Very important that you remember the names of those two chemicals. So the key to this practical is creating those anaerobic conditions. So firstly, make your glucose solution, boil it and cool it. And boiling it will drive out any gases and it's important to let it cool because if you don't, you will kill the yeast. Boiling the glucose is also a step to remove contaminants, so to remove any microorganisms that could contaminate your practical. So that's another key reason why I like to boil and cool the glucose. So you're going to place into two conical flasks 250 centimetres cubed of your cooled boiled glucose solution and into one flask you're going to add five grams of yeast. Yeast is not added to the other flask because this is your control. And then when we're ready, we added a fermentation lock to both flasks and we have filled these locks with lime water. So when you're set up and all ready to go, this is what you should have. You should have one vessel with your yeast and your glucose solution. That's your test apparatus. And you should have the other vessel with just the glucose solution. No yeast. That's your control. Then we have the two fermentation locks half filled with lime water. These are really important because the fermentation locks maintain anaerobic conditions and they also prevent the entry of contaminants into your vessels. In some books, you can see that a layer of oil is also added to both vessels. This is to maintain those anaerobic conditions, but this is optional and not necessary because the fermentation lock is doing that. So when everything is set up, you transfer both vessels into a water bath set between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius or into an incubator and you leave for 24 hours. After a short period of time, if you look at the test apparatus, its fermentation lock, you'll soon be able to see bubbles of carbon dioxide and this lime water turns milky. So let's take a look at an actual setup. On the right is the test and on the left is the control. You can see on the right, you can see the bubbles of CO2 in the fermentation lock and froth. On the left, no bubbles of CO2, no froth. After 24 hours, remove from the water bath or the incubator and filter. Add some of the test filtrate into one test tube and some of the control filtrate into another test tube. To test for alcohol, we add some potassium iodide solution and sodium hypochlorite solution to both test tubes. And then we warm gently for between four and five minutes. After this, allow both test tubes to cool. And if you take a look at the test test tube here on the right, you can see that there are yellow crystals, which is a positive result for ethanol. Whereas the control, it stays that brownie orange color. So if we also test against distilled water, so we have our test solution and we've distilled water, you can see that we get that positive result for ethanol, the yellow crystals. So can we answer these questions at the end of the practical? What is respiring? Yeast is respiring anaerobically. How did you establish anaerobic conditions? Well, firstly, we boiled the glucose and then we cooled it and this drove out any oxygen, any other gases as well. And then we also added a fermentation lock. What was placed in the fermentation lock, we added lime water. And in the case of the test solution, the one with the yeast, that lime water turned milky. How did you know that fermentation was taking place? We could see the bubbles of CO2. How did you know when it had ceased? Well, there's no more bubbles produced. And also you may see a layer of dead yeast because the alcohol will poison the yeast. How did you test for alcohol? In our case, we performed the iodoform test, which is the test for ethanol. We added sodium hypochlorite solution and potassium iodide solution and heated the test tubes. And a positive result was the formation of yellow crystals. So that is the end of that practical. It's important to write your own notes now. Can you summarise this practical and look for all the exam questions, checking the answers with the official marking scheme? Best of luck.